Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, coming to you live each and every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern with your hosts, Jeff Herb, John Samuelson, Sam Patterson, and Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, the only podcast that happens live every single Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. You're listening to episode number 22. Thank you for joining us today. Today's show, we're going to be talking all about video apps and video production. What does it take to make some great video production with you and your students? There's, of course, several ways that you can check out our show each and every week. You can simply go over to the TechEducatorPodcast.com homepage at TechEducatorPodcast.com, where we have all of our great show archives, video, audio, and our show notes are right here for you live each and every single week. And you can also follow us live at TechEducatorPodcast.com. We, of course, broadcast live each and every single week on TeacherCast at TeacherCast.tv. Thank you for joining us. We are welcome to have you here. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and I'd like to introduce our guest host for the first time, Mr. John Samuelson. John, how are you today? I'm fine, Jeff. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. A uh, lot's been going on with you and the Techlandia show. First of all, how was EdCamp yesterday? You know, I had Ed Camp home last week, and I had Ed Camp Fort Worth this last Saturday. I took a bus on up because I hate the drive, and uh, it was great. They did a great job organizing it. It was really well run. Um, they're getting smoother and smoother the more Ed Camps there are. They're, they're really more people are attending too, more new people every every time. I think it's gaining some momentum. Excellent. I, I know this week we've got a few coming up in New Jersey. We have Ed Camp Steam which is the first ed camp uh, doing to that. And then uh, coming up soon, we have ed camp leadership, which is more administrative style. So lots of great stuff going on with that. How's everything with the Techlandia show? Uh, Techlandia was um, canceled last yesterday because I was coming back and fell asleep when I got home. But um, we have three shows that we're going to get ready, and I think we're going to put them all up this week. We've just had them sitting there, and we'll be back on our reg regularly scheduled Saturday time starting next week. We had even talked about bringing this new upstart uh, ed tech guy, Dave Guyman, and having him as a guest. But I, I see him over three slots over to my left. So uh, maybe, maybe we'll, uh, we are we already missed our chance. I don't know. We'll see if he's allowed to come on the show today. Good That's to see right. you back, John. I know we missed you last week, and uh, looking forward to hearing some more stuff about you. Thanks. Also, want to bring on another co-host uh, for the first time in two weeks. I want to welcome back the newly married. Jeff Herb. Jeff, how are you today? Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, doing very well, thanks. It's good to be back uh, here on the show. Talk to us a little bit about what's been going on in your life. You uh, took a little bit of a hiatus there, didn't you? Yes, I did. It's been about a month since I've updated anything that I'm used to updating, uh, but all for good reason. I uh, had our wedding a couple weeks ago, which was great, and uh, just spent the last two weeks in Antigua. And that was awesome for our honeymoon. So it's been nice being able to kind of decompress a little bit and uh, just, you know, ultimately excited to get back in the swing of things and get going with uh, some of the podcasts and posting. Actually, on the flight there and back, I've been cranking out new articles for the website. So uh, hopefully that dry spell will kind of come to an end in the next week or so here when I start putting that stuff up on the site. Now, uh, we've been getting some reports of the wedding. In fact, we actually have a, a – it was like the first family photo. Would you mind mm -hmm. if we showed it to everybody? No, I think that's a good idea. So we have a photo here of you and your wife. And yep. um, I believe in the middle here – let's see. Yes, right here in the middle, I believe – I don't know why we didn't get invited, but this is you, your beautiful wife – and then Waka, Grog the Zombie, and Sheep. What were they doing there, and and did they ask to dance with your beautiful bride? Well, of course. I mean, they were guests of honor, and they actually sat at the, they sat at the head table with us. Uh, really important for them to be there just because of how uh, influential they have been uh, in both of our lives. <laughs> uh, so, John, you noticed that we didn't get an invitation, but the puppet did. Uh, what do you think about that, John? You know what? I, my first thought when I saw the picture was, boy, Jeff really married up. That was my only thought. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Jeff, how was the uh, honeymoon? 
Oh, it was great. It was so nice. We were uh, at the Sandals in Grand Antigua, and it was perfect. I mean, all inclusive, and you got to just hang around and do whatever you want for 10 days. And, you know, it was just a nice change from the hectic and craziness that's going on around here. So it's good to have a little time to get away and also, you know, nice to kind of come back and get back into it again. Nice. Well, it's uh, it'll be good to see some live tweeting coming out of your account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's been, of course, a lot of great stuff happening over in our neck of the woods. It's been a busy two weeks. We just got back from a long trip to Arizona where I was able to do my uh, a keynote address for the Pearson Authentic Learning Conference. And then I came back home on a Sunday and then immediately flew out on the following Wednesday to Indiana where we broadcast it live from the G Greater Clark County Convention. It was the GCCC uh, 13 and it was an amazing, amazing trip. Um, one of the biggest highlights, of course, was this 11-year-old that was actually uh, asked to come and keynote the address, which was really, really amazing. So we took all that great stuff, and uh, you can certainly find that over here on teachercast.net. And one of the things that we did while we were away, um, simply because I couldn't sleep in our hotel, was we gave birth to the brand new TeacherCast Broadcasting Network. Now, we've been talk talking about, you know, the last two years, we've been talking about the TeacherCast podcast, but we've officially rebranded ourselves here as the TeacherCast Broadcasting Network. So uh, TCBN here is going to be coming soon. But you can, of course, go to teachercast.net slash broadcast. Check out all of our shows with uh, wonderful educators, great developers. And then, of course, all the way here at the bottom, we have our Tech Educator podcast. Now, People out there might be saying, how can I hear the Tech Educator podcast at a time other than Sunday nights at 7? And so I always say, you can certainly go to the techeducatorpodcast.com, where we have archives of all of our shows, our audio and video shows. Here, of course, is our episode last week. So in case you weren't on the show, John, you can uh, certainly check this out. We have our audio, we have our video, and our show notes right there. You can, of course, leave us a voicemail at techeducatorpodcast.com slash voicemail. Twitter us at techedshow. And, of course, leave us an, an email at feedback.techeducator.com. Uh, techeducatorpodcast.com but we have one more person to introduce today the one the only dave guyman dave how are you today i'm doing great thanks for having me on and happy birthday thank you so much uh we are thrilled to have you on i, I we had a great time out there in isti i i what did you do at isti i i was i was a first timer at isti so i ran around like i like a chicken with my head chopped off. I followed iPad Sammy and uh, Allison Anderson around trying to figure out what a pro does at ISTE. Um, and I spent a lot of time looking for sessions on online learning and uh, robotics. Those are two things that I am that I'm moving into this next year. Nice, nice. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Dave. Well, I'm I'm 26. I'm from Idaho Falls, Idaho. That is somewhere near California, right above Utah. Uh, south of Canada, and I am the newly hired middle school teacher for Bonneville Online School, which is the only public online school in the state of Idaho. I taught sixth grade and third grade in the previous uh, three years of my career, and I am uh, the three-week-old host of the Take 5 podcast, which is a five-minute professional development podcast uh, that you can find on Podomatic.com or iTunes. Nice, nice. Well, welcome to the show. We're glad yeah, that you're thank here. you. Now, today's show is all about video production, different kinds of video production, how to create good video quality, and also some of the apps that we're using. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to start with you. You've got some experience creating some videos. You also run a uh, Twitter channel that has some really cool educator-type videos. Why don't you give us a little bit of background on video production, what do you use, and maybe a few tips on uh, where can we start with things. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, typically, I really enjoy using iMovie, and um, that's not even just mobile. I use iMovie when I'm on my desktop computer as well, and I really think that it is probably one of the easiest and quickest ways to put together a movie of either um, video segments or just still images. Um, being able to just dump them all into iMovie, string them together, throw a piece of audio over it if that's what you're looking to do, and then export it. 
I mean, it's really, really simple, and it turns out just beautifully. And the nice thing about iMovie is that if you're working on a Mac, you have that capability of interweaving iMovie into the different products that Apple makes to make it just that much easier for you to integrate um, you know, different pieces of software into that movie as well. So, you know, just as that first piece of information, I really do like iMovie, and that's what I typically use, uh, whether I'm on my mobile device or on my desktop computer, it's my go-to. Um, that said, though, I mean, there's different, different times you use different things, and I know it's not totally uh, realistic to say, all right, let's everyone use iMovie in your classroom. If you have one-to-one -one with iPads, it's not necessarily going to say that every kid has paid for an iMovie copy, nor is that necessarily cost effective. Um, there is an app that I've seen and used before that's free. It's called Splice. I don't know if any of you guys have used it before, um, but it's really easy. It's a free app. It does have some in-app purchases, mainly the ones used to just get rid of the ad that's at the bottom of it. Um, but it's it's so easy to use. Let me see if I can throw up reflector here and show you it real quick. Sure. Anyway, it's very similar to. Let me. I'll talk well, or at least try to talk <laughs> while I'm pulling it up. Yes, um, it, I would know that uh, Jeff's been away, but usually we do try and talk and avoid uncomfortable <laughs> silences. Yeah, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, here we go. Sometimes I have issues with iOS 7, too, not wanting to cooperate. Yes, the iOS 7 is not very conducive to the new apps. It hasn't been too bad, though. It's okay. Okay, can you guys see it? Yes. Yay! So the app's called Splice. Loads landscape form. And I put together something real fast. I seriously did this while Jeff, I'm, I don't mean to be rude, but I did this while you were doing the opening credits. And <laughs> um, I threw together about four or five pictures. It really just opens into this. It says, do you want to start a new project? And you say yes. And then it takes you right into your camera roll where you can choose as many pictures or videos as you want that are in your camera roll. And it dumps it into the strip. And it automatically adds a transition in there. Um, the cross dissolve is what I put in there, but you can choose from a different different view. And then you can preview it. And then you can just watch it as it progresses through your slideshow. And so it's pretty cool how that works. And when you're ready to say, all right, this is good, I'm happy with the way it is, you just hit export. You can choose between your two qualities, and then it exports it and saves it right in your camera roll again, which is perfect because you can either then message it to a teacher, you can upload it to YouTube, uh, share it to Facebook, Twitter, however it is that you want to, you can email it. Um, and then, a, you know, soon with iOS 7, you're going to be able to do the airdrop, which will be really nice too. So I, I really like this because of the fact that it's free and it's so, so simple to put together that any kid in any age range should be able to handle this without a problem. So I know that, you know, I kind of ran with something that you had a more basic question, and I turned it into something not so basic. <laughs> but um, I just I, I found this, you know, several weeks ago, and I've shown it to a couple teachers that are using it right now in summer school classes, and they are totally swearing by it just because of how easy it is to get up and running. So I have a feeling that for just photo slideshows, I'm going to probably start using that just because it's a lot easier than trying to deal with some of the more advanced features of iMovie even. We have a question coming in for you here about that app, um, specifically wondering why the Lego figure didn't have a beard, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, that's a good question. I got to ask. For those of you who are watching, my dad works for Lego, and he actually had them make this at the uh, headquarters for the wedding, so that was kind of cool. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have a question coming in here from uh, uh, one of our favorite viewers here, at uh, F.A. Squire. And uh, she says, can we talk about how to achieve great audio quality voiceovers integration? Now, particularly, we would have to have an app that would be good for using all of those different things. I mean, to do a voiceover or to do any of those things, I know when I'm working on my desktop, I'm a big person for Final Cut, and I use Final Cut X. And I know a lot of people use Final Cut Pro. Now, you can still do voiceovers on iMovie. You can certainly use other programs out there. What 
would you say desktop wise is a great app to use i mean okay final cut x is pretty expensive but what are you guys using or what are you seeing other educators using for even classroom style video work uh anybody ahead, john yeah. <laughs> I have one. I, you know, um, not that I, you know, and I'm sitting here talking into one right now, the iRig microphone. But uh, you know what? I, I just noticed that um, I get the um, the IK multimedia um, updates on my email. Do you know that the iRig microphones just went down to eighteen dollars each? I almost oh my god died. And um, they have one that also goes into your phone. That it works for about fifteen ninety nine. It's they've they've really price dropped them, and I find that when you're using the iPads, I mean now my background is I was one to one iPad school. The iRig microphones at the middle setting always work perfect, no matter if you're in a noisy classroom or what. And they're usually about forty forty five dollars. Even I've even seen them as as high as fifty five. So if you can get an iRig microphone right now for seventeen ninety nine, they must be making something new. I I seriously thought about buying five of them and just donating them to my um, the iPad card at my son and daughter's school because I think that they're that valuable to use. So um, I, I think that they give great audio every time and it doesn't matter whether you're in a noisy classroom of first graders, it works. Well and Jeff, if you want proof of it, I know that we've all three probably used it on our shows at one point, but you can go back to the ICE conference episode on the Instructional Tech Talk podcast when John, you and I were sitting there in the middle of all the craziness of people walking around and it sounds like it's just you and me and maybe two other people in the room. Uh, and it was amazing how well that works. So it's if you're looking for what it sounds like when it, there's a room full of noisy people, uh, that's definitely one episode you can go listen to that was recorded entirely on the iRig mic. Uh, definitely not in the quietest place at the ice guy. No, not at all. I don't know. What else I know doing? Dave's got to have some tricks. Dave, yeah, do you have some tricks? From Dave here. Uh, I'm kind of with you, John, in that a uh, good microphone has really improved the sound quality for my recordings, and this might get a little bit loud because I'm taking this microphone off the top of my desktop screen, but I got this a while ago. It's a Samson Go mic, and, you know, it's a pivot, clips onto, you can put it on a tripod, you can clip it onto the top of your uh, laptop, you can set it down on the desk. Um, and you can get an adapter to plug this into an iOS device as well. But uh, it has a lot of different settings on there. And you can notice just on the one that I have, if I turn it around, that the sound quality blocks out from the back pretty well. Um, oh, wow. This, yeah. That, I, I have to close the windows up here by where I'm sitting at because if I have the windows open, I can hear uh, birds that I can't <laughs> see. Out my window. They're somewhere. But but, uh, yeah, I think the CIA is responsible for the design of this because I've been spying on my neighbors ever since getting it. But uh, definitely two thumbs up for actually investing in a good microphone. And this this is the Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N, Go Mic. And I got it on Amazon uh, for $30. It retailed for about 50 or 60 I believe. But uh, the list price on Amazon is 30 Hmm. I always say that Amazon usually defaults to one of the, the better prices for a lot of things yeah. too, when we when we list them. Yeah, and with with uh, the podcast I do, I just use Audacity and this Samsung Go mic, and uh, the control over the sound quality is very good. That's one I haven't seen before. That looks awesome. Yeah, yeah I like it a lot. It's it's very compact. It comes with a little traveling case, and uh, you can just put it right in your pocket. That's awesome. That's cool. I like that one. Jeff, so, or, yeah, Jeff, I know that you're a pretty big fan of... Uh, yeah, we've got the expert. Um, I know one of the things that I had the... One of the shows I had the pleasure with last week in recording, and uh, we are getting a lot of people watching right now, so if you have any questions, please uh, tweet us at the Tech Ed Show, or you can certainly reach out at techeducatorpodcast.com, of course, or Tech Educators, our hashtag. Um, we are starting to get some questions in here. I want to showcase a show that we actually did last week on TeacherCast. And let me see if I can pull it up here. If you go over to wevideo.com, I don't know if you guys have got a chance to see this, but wevideo is a really neat online video editor. It's completely online. There is a free version and a educator version. And what I mean by that is for free, you can sign up, your kids can sign up, they can upload video, 
create things, have a great time with it, but for a price, you can actually log in as an educator with a class. And so you can actually put all of your video up in your teacher account and the kids can sign in under your account and actually can use the video that you're providing to then create a video of their own. And Ooh. so wevideo.com, or I'll also pull over here, it's uh, podcast.teachercast.net slash wevideo. And I'll make sure that we put that in the show notes. But uh, you can see our video show here. It was about 20 minutes or so. They did a full webinar with us. And it shows you guys how it works. There's uh, links here to all their video stuff. And uh, we had uh, two wonderful guests on. But uh, that's called We Video over at WeVideo.com. Um, when I was going out to Arizona, I was trying to figure out how to come up with a video and how to put a video together. And I just didn't have time. So Sam and I put together this plan that I would take all of my video, I would drop box it to him, he would put it together, send it back to me, I would look at it, I would drop box that back to him, and as fate would talk to you, that day was when I was introduced to Wii Video, which was great because with one password we could both get in there and work on the same online video, and it worked out really well. The product is good. The transitions are good. The text is good. The space is amazing up there. You can put a lot of video up. And I would definitely recommend that to anybody. Uh, again, podcast.teachercast.net slash wevideo or wevideo.com. Lots of good stuff there. So if you are looking for a class um, location to create video, that is certainly something. Again, they do have a pricing range in there. But for a couple bucks, it's certainly worth it to be able to have your media up and your kids can work from it. Um, very, very good stuff. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about other desktop solutions before we dive into the iPad stuff. I mean, where are we with iMovie? Are you guys big iMovie fans as far as making trailers or using iMovie to create things? Um, Dave, you're on a PC, I would assume, right? So that's where you're using Audacity? Which... Yeah, I use Audacity on my PC, but I rely heavily on iMovie on my iPhone and iPad. Mm -hmm. Now, for both personally and with my class. People ask when I do these workshops, you know, what is the PC version of iMovie? And, and you can say, you know, if you're going to make an iMovie trailer, there really isn't one, right? But if you're yeah. going to be, if you're looking for a free thing, you of course can you you can use what Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, but that, I, I don't find that that's very user friendly or as versatile as even the. 499 uh, iMovie app is mm. so I don't ever use that <laughs> uh, I'm not the guy to go for PC movie making because <laughs> if I had the money I would be using a Mac I think that um when you think of when I whenever I think about when I used to work in Clark County school district in Nevada and we we had PCs and then I went up to Alaska and we had a Apple products I mean I think that the one thing that I really find is that's why people in Broadcasting use Apple products. They just make better video and sound production products. And I mean, that's one of the advantages of using Apple. So if you're going to go that way, that's why one reason you would use Apple, not to even be political and get into a debate about it. But I think it's just, I, whenever I had to use, uh, yeah, whenever I have to use PC video making things, it just makes me not happy. And they, the, the project, <laughs> and it makes the kids not happy too, because the projects usually didn't work very well with like Windows Movie Maker. They were always kind of left stunned. Yeah, can we talk about Windows Movie Maker a little bit? Why Please. is that such a bad piece of software? Um, not going to say who makes it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just, I just always found that it never, you know, and this is before we get it. It is. It just, it, it just, never really worked for me and and as i i really tried because i really like making movies with the kids and and m documenting those things and it just it just never worked yep. the flip I, I the think... flip videos worked before that i mean that was the better one flip video a few years back mm -hmm. i think the windows movie maker requires you to put so much time in to figure out the user interface for such little return you can't create that fantastic of a production for how much time you have to spend figuring out how to use the program. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. For, how lo for how long it's been around, I'm just surprised that it hasn't been refined well enough. Right. But right. maybe it's something where people have kind of given up on it, and so why would Microsoft spend the time developing it further? 
that's what we've been saying about their phones, though. And their operating systems. And their operating systems, <laughs> their networking stuff. And by the way, oh. have you seen the Surface tablet recently? I shouldn't say that. I did. It was all over ISTE. I, I like my Surface. I actually do like my Surface tablet. It's uh, over there, and it's holding up my drink. So. <laughs> oh, poor Surface. Do you like the Surface, though? I mean, in all seriousness, I've not touched one, so I don't know anything about it. Um, my friend uh, Greg Garner said that when I unwrapped mine at ISTE, he said he wanted to like videotape me trying to figure it out for the first 10 minutes. Oh, and uh, he watched me, and he said I didn't do as badly as he did. He said I did a pretty decent job of figuring things oh, out. Bad, but huh? it, was, it was, you know, it, it, there's a reason they were giving him away. We found out the reason after they took a nine hundred million dollar loss or whatever on it. So, but um, I think it'll be. I mean, I I can see people using it. Matt Gomez did tell me I'm not trying to to defend the surface, but I will a little bit. He said that he's gonna, you know, he's ready to use it in his classroom. And um, I I got mine and I'm um giving mine to my son and daughter's school so they can have an extra device or one of the teachers can use it. So, cool. I mean, you know, schools that don't have. That's a, it's an extra device that people can use. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Definitely. let's get into what people are asking about online here, which is iPad apps. Now there's a lot of different iPad apps for video. Some of them use longer versions, such as the iMovies, or there's a you know really good app from Pinnacle. But there's also some shorter video apps. So I asked our co-host today to talk about the shorter versions as well as the longer versions. Um, Dave, let me start with you. What video apps or what video services are you fond of? What are you using on your iPad? Well, this past year I taught sixth grade in a traditional brick and mortar school and we entered a video contest for the state of Idaho, which we ended up winning. And we used a core of three or four apps. iMovie was the home base for us. We took what we did with these other apps and, and brought them together in iMovie on the iPad. Um, but the first one that I probably use more than anything in my classroom is green screen and uh, green screen movie FX letter F and X is probably what you'll find it in the iTunes store and it basically lets you take your iPad and record uh, whatever it is you're performing and uh, take out the background now it works best if you have a flat colored background like a white wall or uh, I, I got some green fabric from the craft store and, and tacked it up to our bulletin board in class. And uh, I don't have a reflector app because, as, as Jeff told me, they're $20 and uh, I like free. But I'm going to try to show you this. It probably won't work well on a, pot or on a webcast because I don't have a green screen behind me. But <laughs> the way that the app works is if, uh, let's see if it'll work with this white background, if I just touch that, it takes all that color out, and you can see that I have a video of the Bellagio Fountains, I believe it is. Oh, yeah, uh, I can see that. Yep, yeah. and so it's recording me. Um, you know, I can balance the colors just by tapping, and it takes that whole color out of the video. And you can record this. It records audio, and it can upload to your camera roll, or uh, I believe it can also go to iMovie. I may be wrong on that, though. Uh, my students had a great time making newscasts, um, our video, music video that we made for our contest, and uh, I recommend that to everybody. Green Screen Movie FX is what I believe it's called. And uh, another one that we used is Motion Picks, and Motion Picks is free in the iTunes store, I believe. If not, it's 99 cents. But what Motion Picks does is it allows you to either use an existing movie or record a new movie and either speed up the frames per second or slow them down. And so for the music video that we made, I wanted to have uh, all of my students walking into class and filing it to their desks super quick. And so I re just recorded them. This is what it looks like when you open up the app. I recorded them just by pressing record a new movie. And the only downside to this is you have to pick the speed beforehand that you want your movie to be. So up at the top it says number of frames, uh, seconds between frames, and seconds before start. But then you just record your movie, however long it is. You let it process. It speeds it up or slows it down, whatever it is you want. And then, again, can export to your camera roll, which I then upload to iMovie. 
And the last one that I want to show uh, right now is Action Movie FX. And uh, Action Movie FX is one of my favorite to play with. We didn't use it in this video contest because it just didn't fit. But Action Movie FX allows you to create special effects that you would find in an action movie right in your regular movies. So it's based on uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, I believe. <laughs> but uh, I liked using this. I liked using this with my students just for fun. I can pick something like this, uh, a missile attack. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And you nuked your students, huh? Yeah. <laughs> if you can see the sample window right here, it shows you what is going to happen in your movie. So it shows the missiles coming down, and rather than having that street view, you can have it blowing up the gym or uh, whatever, whatever it is you're doing. It also has a lot of other free options. One of my favorites is this car smash. So I was driving home late at night. I was the passenger. I or someone else was driving, and I was filming the road out in front of us out on I-15, so a freeway, and out of nowhere, this car came flying out of the sky and uh, jumped our car just like that, and I sent it to my mom, who didn't really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but those, those are my favorite movie uh, I guess you'd call them movie supplemental apps because I use those to make what I record with iMovie um, just better, mm -hmm. more fun, more interactive. There's actually a supplement to that action movie, Dave. There's one that just came out for horror flicks. Yeah? It's the same, same exact idea. Um, I, I was going to show it tonight, but I haven't had a time to play with it. But it's the same exact idea, but it's all horror movie uh, effects. Oh, that's like cool. That would so. <laughs> be fun for Halloween especially. Uh, John, why don't you uh, give us one of your apps? Well, I, I don't really have any apps. No, I'm just kidding. I have tons. Um, I want to say that um, one of the things that I, I, I haven't used the green screen movie FX one, but I, I get asked that a lot on Twitter, and I have to say that the other one that is handy is vScope Live, uh, v -Scope Live and it's V-E-E -E Scope Live. And that's two ninety nine, dollars I think, for the whole suite, but you can actually try it out. I was going to ask Dave. Dave, are you going to be able to show us your, um, the movie that won for the state afterwards? Or you, can't, uh, you can um, screen share that one. Can you, can you bring it up? If I can figure that out, it's on okay. YouTube. I will figure that out while okay. you're talking. Okay, that's good. All right, so I have some of mine. So um, I guess one of um, my favorite apps, and I'm going to actually screen share one that I, uh, that I did, was I did the last day of school. I actually like to use all of my movie making apps kind of together, like Dave was saying a little bit. And so I took some... Uh, one of the, I took a, one of the motion ones, which is called iMotion HD, and I made like a time lapse photo. And then um, there's a really great app that I like that's called, and I, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it lately, and it's called Clipper. And so Clipper takes all your existing videos that you have already and makes them into little three second clips. So I'm actually going to go ahead and screen share here. And I'm going to show you because I've got it booted up right here. This is the fifth grade graduation. I'm going to see if I can make it full screen for you. And you can put in your music. I don't know if you can hear the music. And this will only take a minute, by the way. But so this is our fifth grade graduation. Can you guys hear the music at all or no? No. Okay. So I've got my little mm -hmm. funky music playing. Instrumental-ish. But Clipper is awesome. I love Clipper. So Clipper just took all these videos, and I, I just kept taking short little burst videos while I was sitting up there running the whole graduation ceremony, too. And it's got some cool little – I've got Washed Out, my favorite artist that donated his uh, song to the Techlandia theme. <laughs> but, um, I mean, look how cute those kids are. Those are – and then here's the time-lapse part. And it and it'll take up to 20 videos and just take them into little three second clips right there. And so that was seriously just nothing more than me taking some videos and just moving them into those kinds of th moving them into those kinds of things. So I it's easy to take cute little bursts of short videos. Like the whole video doesn't have to be cute then because it'll allow you actually in there. It doesn't just take it'll take random ones, but you can also pick exactly what 3 second clip you want. You can move them around. It's as simple as holding the button down and things like that. So I really like Clipper and the other one that did the time lapse was iMotion HD. 
I have that one too, John. iMotion HD, I love that. iMotion HD is really good. I like that one. Um, yep. I'm uh, uh, one of my friends that works at Kip Schools. Brian showed me that one. Brian Doyle, and uh, he showed me that a long time ago, and I really like that. Nice. But anyway, those are I have I have another one, but I've got a, one more video booted for later. But um, yeah, I, I like taking the videos and making them in there. Now I will say that um, if you're looking at a web-based um, solution that does have an iPad app as well, uh, kind of like Jeff was talking about, Animoto is always been very basic. I, I really like their web application a lot, but and it was one of the first ones I used like, you know, four or five years ago when it came out. But um, I, I don't like the, the app for the iPad, but you can use it. It has some limitations. But um, I really like Animoto, and you can get an educator account if you just tell them you're an educator and give them your e, uh, teacher email. Animoto is very simple for those people that are just looking for a basic picture solution where you can put in words and things like that. Yep. Did you get the video, Dave? Yeah, I've got that cool. whenever. Well, uh, let's run the video at the end, if that's okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, the one app that I wanted to showcase that maybe most people aren't quite familiar with is actually called Pinnacle. And let me see if I can bring up the right one. Oh, there it is. So Pinnacle is actually one of the original video production softwares that I started with a long time ago on the de on actually on the PC. And it was made by Corel. It was Corel, and then it was Pinnacle, yeah. and then it was bought by Avid, and they actually released it for the iPad as Avid, and then they changed the name to Pinnacle. And I like this a lot um, because it is very much like iMovie. Now, if you want an iMovie. Uh, you know, substitute, this would be a great one for you. Now, it doesn't do trailers, which is the only major difference, but it's very simple. You can log in here. You can start. You can create something. I'll call it TEP for techeducatorpodcast.com. And as you can see here on top, we have a media library. We can take a video. We'll just grab this video. We'll pop it up here. It'll render it just ever so slightly. And then from here, of course, we can add some pictures, we can add movies, we can add a transition. You can really do some pretty uh, pretty interesting video editing here. And again, that's called Pinnacle. And I, I don't know if, Jeff, if you found out, well, I forget what the price of it is. Maybe it's five bucks, maybe it's a little bit more, I'm not sure. But really, there's a lot of neat stuff that you can do here. So if you're looking for an iMovie alternative, Pinnacle is certainly a good one for you. And if you're on a if you're on a PC and you're looking for desktop software, Pinnacle is certainly a great uh, app that you can use. I would recommend it. If I was still using a PC for my video editing, that's what I do. I think the desktop app is like eighty bucks or a hundred bucks or something like that. But it is a semi-professional level um, app. I mean, you can do chroma key, green screen on it. You can do transitions. You can. I mean, I've made two and a half hour full feature documentaries on it before, and that was probably seven or eight years ago at this point. So Pinnacle is a really, really neat software, um, both on the iPad and on the um, mobile device. Yeah, it looks really cool. I had heard about it before, but I had never used it. Um, it it's I really, really neat. It's, yeah. It is actually twelve ninety nine. Okay, but it, it's well worth it though. It really, it really is. Like it. I mean, you're gonna, I know you're gonna compare it and say, well, iMovie's four ninety nine versus this, but it really does give you a robust, um, you know, video producing experience. And I think you can even plug in your, your external devices, your microphones and stuff like that. So all of that stuff really works. Nice. Um, Jeff, what do you got? Well, unfortunately, a couple of mine have been taken. <laughs> oh, um, well, let, let no, me... No, don't apologize. I was totally kidding. Be, be, um, let's throw this at you. For short videos, what do you prefer? Are you an Instagram, a tout, a... Uh, a vine. What what do you see out there for short videos for people who are That's looking to do those? That's what I was going to start talking about. Um, it's it's an interesting thing. I I've really gotten to start using Instagram more. Um, I hadn't for a long time up until you know probably the start of the summer, despite how popular it's been. And um, a couple of my family members got me onto it because they're like, oh, you got to be on Instagram. I'm like, all right, whatever. And so I started using it and it's really, a, it's really a lot of fun. And I like that the, I don't know how about, do you guys know how long ago they started the video adaptation to it? Uh, about a week it before. A couple, yeah, a couple months ago. It was yeah, a week before ISTE, I thought. So right around when I started using it, I guess. But 
I think that's great. The way that it's so seamlessly integrated into the feed is really cool. Um, you know, I'm just kind of excited and interested to see how educators are going to start using Instagram. And I'm not sure it's the right platform. I, you know, people argue that Vine is the same way. Um, but I just see a lot of possibility with the ability to mix still image with video and have people be able to respond and comment. And, um, you know, I think you can limit the ill effects of it by, you know, keeping your accounts more privatized. But um, I don't know, same thing with everything else, same thing with using Tumblr in the classroom or however, whatever service or platform you want to you want to roll with. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do like Instagram. Vine has been really cool. I've been taking a lot of videos myself with Vine at different uh, presentation I, presentations I've been to. Uh, when I go into classrooms to observe, I'll usually use Vine here and there and just record snapshots of what I see going on in the classroom. And that's been a lot of fun and the teachers like seeing you know, little snapshots of what they were doing too, which is cool. Um, so I think each of them have their definite pluses and I think it's really what you want your end result to be. I think Clipper is a lot like Vine. You're gonna take those three second snapshots of what's going on and that's really what the idea is. Um, you know, this kind of, I always say it and I've said it in several articles I've written too on my website. You really gotta work with what your end goal is mm -hmm. and if you know that you want a couple of quick blasts of different things going on included in your video then vine is probably your way to go for capturing and if not then really anything else is fine too so now what, jeff, you're gonna say something, jeff, jeff when, you're, when you're switching between the two things mm -hmm. like instagram vine when you use those apps it takes the video and it puts it right up to the service right or is it saving it also onto your device w what does it actually do it does directly put it on the service. I'm not sure, to be honest, if you can actually save a copy of it. Can you? John, well, you're shaking your head yes. Respond mm -hmm. to that. Yes, you can. Um, you don't have to post them to Vine even on a Vine. You can actually switch the off switch and not post them, and they'll just save right to your camera roll. Oh, cool. Yeah, you don't have to use Vine. There's just little things you have to do to kind of um, – play around with them. I'm a huge fan of Vine and I like I like that. I, I will say real quick that there's another I'm a big fan of like the, the interface for Vine where you can take your phone and kind of press your, finger, your thumb on the button and your, on your phone and it will take little it like almost edits it and so I, my last one that i was going to throw out there is this one called on the cut and so mm. on the cut does the same thing as a vine but it's 54 seconds is what you have the ability to do and then you don't have to worry about posting it to vine and all the bad connotations that come with the vine you can actually just do on the cut and it will save right to your camera roll and i really like being able to go okay i'm going to take a video here by pressing my thumb down i'm going to stop now i'm going to move cuts and i'm going to go over here and so that one's, I think it's 99 cents and it's called On the Cut. Hmm. And I'll put that one in the show notes too. I've been putting everything in the show notes. Now we have a question here from Jeff Bailey. He says, how many bells and whistles do you let the kids use on these apps? And how much do you pull back and make sure that they're actually learning something? So let's talk a little bit about pedagogy. We have all these access to the short video apps, long video apps. How do you create a lesson around this? How do you choose what to use and what not to use? And what are some advice to start using video production in their classrooms. Uh, Matt, let me kind of put the question at you first. Well, I think, oh. Sorry. Dave. Dave. Oh. I, wow, you have to tell Matt <laughs> yeah. D. Gomez that one. <laughs> <laughs> when we created our, our video this past year, we started out by talking about what we wanted to create. So it was, it was for a contest to celebrate uh, the Morrill Act, which was a law that created land-grant universities back in 1865, I think. Wow. And uh, so we talked about what we wanted to create. We talked about what we wanted to portray and then what types of effects that would require us to have. With that, we then went and did some research on apps, so we kind of reverse engineered our video. And uh, I was working with a small group of students, I think it was five girls that, that I was working with to do this. And uh, uh, we then responsibly outlined how we would use these apps to achieve the goals that we wanted to achieve in terms of editing and producing our video. So 
uh, my answer to that is start with what you want to create, what your end product is going to look like, and then figure out what the tools you're going to use for that are, rather than saying, hey, here's this really cool app. How can we use this to make a cool video? That's that's my approach. Jeff, go ahead. I was just going to talk about um, how much I like the fact that we have these short video capture apps. Um, I, I like them a lot to Twitter. You know, you have to be so brief in what you're saying and have it count so much because you're limited to a short amount of time. And I think that's really important skill for kids to be able to learn is how to condense what they're learning and condense what they're thinking into something that is direct and can have the most impact on the people that are going to be reading it or watching it. And it's something that I think that was kind of on the wayside for a long time. We kept thinking, oh, you can record longer. You can have more space, more of this, more of that. You know, and I think that kind of got them in a rut where they didn't really have to think about, all right, how do I prune this down to make it the most effective way to communicate my thoughts and my ideas? And so I'm a big fan of the fact that you can limit, you know, six second, 15 second, however long the videos actually are. They have to think really hard about what they're putting in there. And they're, they're not going to have a video full of, uh, and then I went to blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, they, they have to be very creative in the way they deliver their content. And I think that's going to be very beneficial for them as lifelong learners going forward because it's a skill that I, I don't think they've really gotten a lot of. So in terms of pedagogy and in terms of using it in the classroom, I really see that as one of the best skills that they're gaining by using some of these kind of apps. And for the teachers that are watching, you know, use that as a lesson. That's almost a lesson in itself is the editing and the paring down and, you know, deciding what's relevant and what's not that's something that's really key before you even touch the technology to make sure that they understand so they know how to properly use the technology. You know, we, we have another question here from Francis and she says, you know, she's wondering how do we teach the kids to use the video or what kind of devices are kids using to make video these days? And that kind of brings up another question of a lot of times schools will get a class set of iPads or a, cla or, you know, a, a class set of iPads that'll be used between two different classes that fills up very quickly with video depending on the size because not only you know most school districts don't go out and buy the 64 gig what recommendations do you have if a teacher has to share devices between multiple students in multiple classes and there's video on it you can't always find the time to download the video into a desktop machine what are people doing out there guys i mean um the thing the thing that um we try and do is we try and keep them um, um i really think that you have to have like a YouTube option or a Vimeo option to kind of finish the projects up and get them up and off in case, you know, because there's a lot of times when if you have at my son and daughter's school, they have 20 iPads for the whole school of 600 kids. And I mean, you're not right. You're not going to be able to keep, I mean, the, the chances are somebody's going to accidentally delete something or purposefully delete something. Um, if as they go through it, if they can't get it through till next week. So I think that's where Jeff's saying like the short video apps kind of help help out. Now, a lot of times I have to say, and I don't know, I got kind of um, cheesy looks from people when I used to do this, but I mean, my biggest one is my iPhone and I, I give it to my kids to use when I didn't have one-to-one -one devices. I used to give it to them all the time to make their videos because I do, I know I have a 64 gig phone and I know that I can go through and we can kind of, I know that nobody's going to take the video off of that thing. So I really don't mind. There's nothing on my phone that's going to get me in trouble anyway. So that's, <laughs> that's the way I run my Facebook. It's the way I run my Twitter. It's don't put anything out there. That's not going to be, you know, you're a teacher. You've got to act like one, even though a lot of times I don't, um, when I'm at conferences and things, I'm actually a very serious teacher and I really, we some of the best stuff that I have is stuff that was just used on my iPhone 4 or my iPhone 3 or my iPhone 5. And you just give it to students say, please don't drop this. This is my life. <laughs> and that's what I say. So, I mean, that I think that's one way to go around the, uh, the, you know, the system of getting it. But you, you have to have kind of an option and be like, if you're in a shared cart, I've got to have a, a classroom YouTube. I've got to make a classroom Vimeo channel or YouTube channel, something where I can get them off and at least save them so that they're preserved in case they get, you know, taken away. Well, the nice thing about that too, 
John, is that uh, if you have your own private YouTube channel or a public one, whatever your school allows you, is that you can easily share that with parents via email. Yeah, it's it's good. I, I think that it's a skill you have to kind of have. What were you going to say, Jeff? I, I was oh, just I, saying that, that that doesn't always, you know, let's say that you've got a, a project that you're working on with the kids where they're doing three or four days of video shooting. You can't take all those little videos and then make 13 different YouTube clips of basically what might be B-roll. And then you have to download all that stuff back onto a device. How do we handle that if you've got more than one day's worth of shooting to go? On a Not shared problem. cart. On a shared iPad, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, that's that's the trick. You would have to. I mean, that's one where you just have to communicate with your teachers and say, okay, I, I really want to use this. It's going to take more than my one card for the whole school of the week or whatever, I really want you, you would teach the kids to put the stuff into a folder. You'd say, do not delete on it. You'd put the teacher's name on it. And you would just say to the te you know, the teachers that were gonna use the cart with you and say, hey, I, I'm gonna work on this. It's gonna take me three or four, three or four periods. I have them all, their videos are all in this do not delete photo. And then you would just have the kids kind of explain digital, digital citizenship and have the teachers go, okay, we don't want, leave those alone those are untouchable until they get them done and then that's when you would upload them when they're all finished with their project yeah i mean that's a that's a nice way to do it assuming everyone is on board with that and i would like to think that people are um a technological way to address that is by using something like dropbox uh if the kids have a dropbox account they can log into their dropbox account when they're using the ipad Record, record the raw video, save it to Dropbox, and log out of their Dropbox when they turn back in their iPad. Uh, the nice thing is they have that at home then if they want to review what they've done or add to it even. Um, and then the next day when they have the iPads back or next week or whatever it is when the schedule permits, they just log back into their Dropbox account and they have their previous day's worth of footage that they can then string together using one of the video apps that we talked about at the beginning of the show. So, you know, there are options, you know, obviously I, I love the idea of the digital citizenship discussion, at least, you know, respect other people's work, respect other people's time and efforts. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, some kids are a little apprehensive about letting their recorded videos of themselves stay on an iPad for anyone to be able to see. They have a hard time with just recording themselves in general. So I like that option of being able to offer them a little bit of their own privacy with their recordings as well. So, um, you know, there are some options out there. And I know that I see a lot of things through a high school perspective because that's where I've spent the entirety of, me, entirety of my career. John, you've seen it a lot in an elementary setting. And so some of the things that I know I probably say aren't necessarily possible in an elementary building just because of you know, no, I think the drop. I think I think the Dropbox idea is a great idea. I mean, that's that's a that's a good one as well. I think that see, and I think that the the moral to the story is, don't give up just because it seems hard. You can go and find people, and I I mean really, at at some point you can just holler at TeacherCast, and you got Jeff Bradbury sitting right there on Twitter as an expert for you, and he can go ahead and give you the answers you know and there's people out there that have answers don't don't give up you know just there are there are ways to get around the system there's always ways one of the ways that i like system. to get around the the we're not allowed to use youtube is i always bring up media core and we met media core down at isti last year and had a great time with them at isti this year and if you go to teachercast.net slash media core you can see our media core page where it's 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 youtube-esque but what you're not seeing on here is advertising you're not seeing commercials you're not seeing you know all the stuff that gets you in trouble this is your media core page it has your videos your students videos and it is a really nice system here set up for educators by educators and the neat part here is you can look at your library where again, just like YouTube has their playlists, they have everything here in folders, so it's all meta tagged. You can of course tag it as you need to, but also you can take everything and turn it into a classroom podcast very, very simply. So awesome. lots of great stuff over there at MediaCore. And uh, again, they do have a free account that you can certainly try. And I would recommend that versus going on the YouTube way just because of that, uh, you know, it's a little bit easier, I think. You know, we talk a lot about it's it's YouTube, but it's, well, just don't use the word YouTube, and many of your administrators <laughs> are going to say, oh, okay, that works. <laughs> so I think uh, that that's certainly a great thing. 
Guys, it is coming up on 8 o'clock, and we've had a great discussion here. We have one more question coming in from Francis saying, We have no Wi-Fi or iPads, and mobile devices are not permitted in the classroom. Only editing software at school is iMovie Maker, or is, is Windows Movie Maker. Right, right. Um, suggestions. Is that where you just tell the teacher to bring in their own hotspot? <laughs> yeah, right. You could get, I guess you could get by with like a flip video camera. Yeah, I mean, the flip video cameras worked. I mean, they used to work a long time. You could probably get them really cheap now, and yeah. I would use a flip video camera. It, it has the USB. It syncs right into your uh, PC, and uh, they have the editing software there. That's what we used when we were done with Windows uh, Movie Maker before we had our um, Apple products as well. Mm -hmm. I bought a few of those for my classes last year at Staples. They're, I believe, eighteen dollars a piece, and they come with the the <laughs> SD card to it. That's awesome. I used to have. I bought mine when they first came out for like a hundred fifty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. It's been a great show. This is going to be archived at t at TechEducatorPodcast dot com slash twenty two. That's TechEducatorPodcast dot com slash 22 uh dave let's start with you what do you have going on this week and uh what's what's hip and new in the you know going on for dave guyman here uh, i'm excited to continue with the take five podcast it just hit number one in the k-12 education category on podomatic.com and uh is a mover and shaker on there as well and so uh, i've got five new episodes coming up on uh, app smackdown on wednesdays which is where i just regurgitate the apps that i'm kind of uh trending on for the week and uh, I'm looking forward to developing that. This will conclude our first month of the Take 5 podcast. Awesome. Excellent. And, uh, Jeff, what do you have going on now that you're back and ready to go for Instructional Tech Talk? Now that I'm back, I'm just going to spend a lot of time catching up, really. Uh, I'm really excited to put out a couple of new articles that I've been uh, working on, and I will be recording an episode of Instructional Tech Talk on Monday night and hopefully have that released by about Wednesday. And is it true that you've invited Grog the Zombie on before any of us? <laughs> you, you, you were one of my first oh, guests, oh, Jeff. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, what's going on in the world of Techlandia? Um, well, I mean, hopefully catching up as well, and I haven't even been in it, getting married or in Antigua. Antigua. <laughs> I do want to say that while Jeff was gone, you can now control your computer with just motions leap motions my friend oh, wow. so just remember that see you if you stay out of the game jeff you're gone you're you get you get lost so What's i'll i'll on? catch you up we'll have to google hangout you, <laughs> yeah. you haven't seen the you haven't seen the leap motion before no i can go like this and control my scroll down on my computer and things like Ooh, that cool i know it's pretty cool but um yeah on techlandia we're just gonna keep keep on keeping on um i think the one thing that we do have that i would like to give a little shout out to is allison anderson and i will on the 31st be doing a mentor mob uh google hangout and telling people about mentor mob which has moved now sadly from chicago to new york sadly because i all have a lot more chance to go to chicago than new york to see the people but um, anyway, so we have that coming up. It's 7 o'clock Central Standard Time on the 31st, Wednesday. Very cool. Excellent. And there's a lot of great stuff happening this week over at TeacherCast. I am excited on Friday, August 2nd, we're going to be actually recording with Edmodo. And uh, even though that show's not going to be released this week, they're going to be telling me all the great stuff that's happening in EdmodoCon, which is coming up soon. And also, they are re I don't want to say they're relaunching, but they're adding a lot of extra new features and uh, they're going to be showcasing them on TeacherCast first. So if you're an Edmodo user, check us out. Eventually, it'll be podcast.teachercast.net slash Edmodo. So lots of great stuff that's there. Also going to be doing a show on Thursday, it looks like, with AppShed, our good friends who uh, make some great products and help your kids learn how to be an app developer. And also, it looks like Thursday, I'm going to be doing a um, show with vocabulary. So lots of good stuff coming up here. And I want to say thank you, everybody out there, for watching and wishing me a happy birthday. I, uh, <laughs> I'm having a good time. And you never know. Maybe in the next few weeks we might be using this show to make an important announcement here in the life of TeacherCast. So we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about all that stuff soon. Uh, next week we, of course, will be joined back with our good host, uh, Sam Patterson. And we'll see what's going on in the world of Patui. You can, of course, check out Patui every Tuesday night at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, I believe it is. And I know Sam is actually doing a 
tweet up this week. He's trying to get a whole bunch of people together for a tweet up. So if you go to patui.org, you can certainly find out all the information about the tweet up. And if you are in the California area, that was my. I was. That's the closest sound effect to a tweet. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> that's why I, thought, I, did that. I thought those were the crickets. Get off the line here. So. No, no. I was, I was like, well, I've got a few choices. That's the closest thing to a tweet up. Oh my gosh, that was funny. Excellent. Well, of course, you can check out more information on the Tech Educator Podcast right here by visiting techeducatorpodcast.com, where you can, of course, find all of our show notes, all of our backlogs, all of our video archives. And please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're actually on a hunt right now to get over 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. We, uh, we just got 70 subscribers on our YouTube channel by going to teachercast.net slash YouTube. If we have over a thousand subscribers, we will be able to broadcast to you live and commercial free. So if you're uh, sitting out there and you're like, every 15 minutes as a commercial, please go over to teachercast.net slash YouTube, subscribe to our show, and uh, we will be able to bring you live commercial free professional development every single Sunday night at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and you've been listening to the 22nd episode of the Tech Educator Podcast. We'll be back next week, and until that time, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. Good night, everybody.